Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf your one and only, and today we're going to be taking a look at the patch notes for Dragon Blaze. So let's get into it. We probably have a lot to go through, considering people were telling me the next batch of overlords are out. And we got a new area for story. Chapter 5. The final adventure area of Chapter 5. Alright, all right, then we'll go into Chapter 6 soon. Sooner or later. Alright, level cap got extended from 132 to 135. Nothing like really significant there, but you know, a little bit of damage boost. We level. I already talked about Lee. Lee was on, I'm pretty sure, on one of the special reward backgrounds. <laughs> I, I talked about that already. I think it was on uh, fleets. Maybe the fleets or maybe the first batch of elves. Um, I'm pretty sure this guy had a different name. Not really sure. Don't know much about him. Uh, this is our encanter of the elves. I'm pretty sure she uses soldiers. Should be interesting to see what she can do. And then we got this chick, who I don't really know much of, but apparently she's a warrior. Huh. Yeah, I don't know anything about her. So it should be interesting to find out some things. Alright, let's go through the skills. First, we're going to go through Lee. Lee is a warrior, removes buffs with his normal attacks. First skill removes all removable buffs. From one enemy, deals damage, replace an irremovable debuff that lasts for 14 seconds. Upon critical hit, it inflicts additional damage. When swipe is activated, which is our third skill, remove all removable buffs and inflict damage and add splash damage to enemies with max HP. Well, 25% of max HP. Splash damage means it's going to hit everybody else who is pretty much near that character. That's why formation is important because it chooses, it kind of chooses who it hits at that point. So let's say if one of your if it hits the person in the middle, huh. Like, I want to show an example, but I, we can come back. Ah, uh, formation, formation, formation. I don't think a lot of people know this when it comes to, like, splash damage or anybody who's near characters. The game does choose who it hits. So let's say I have a warrior here and splash damage... Well, Lee hits this character and it causes splash damage. It will only hit these characters. It won't touch these two, just because they're in a back formation from these two. If Lee hits here, he'll probably get four of them. So that's pretty much how that goes. So if I hit the, if Lee hits the middle, he's hitting everyone. That's why formation is kind of important for the game because it separates your units, puts them in like different slots and different situations. And plus, it, it really recommend like looking at certain debuffs too. Oh, buffs. That's what I meant to say. But yeah, things like that. No, I'm not trying to do pigs right now. All right, Lee's uh, second skill. Removes all removable debuffs from one enemy, inflicts damage and stuns for 17 seconds. Stunned enemies receive additional ma additional physical damage. Bosses receive even more physical damage. Upon crit chance, I don't know why I say crit chance. Upon critical hit, inflicts additional damage. Upon using swipe, remove all. Okay, I really want to know this skill swipe then. Upon using swipe, remove all removable buffs and deal damage and add splash damage. So what is swipe? Third skill. Using swipe, it becomes a critical hit for 15 seconds. Splash damage is added to each of your attacks. During swipe, you get 
Oh, pretty much life steal. 50% damage inflicted is going to your HP. Swipe cannot be removed. Okay then. Not how bad for what I see. He is a buff remover. And one hell of a good one too, because everywhere he's, it's pretty much your whole team's not meant to have buffs at that point. If it's removable. If it's in removable, then yeah, you're pretty much good. But a lot of the buffs in the game are removable. So yeah. Alright, next passive. First passive. When Lee lands a critical hit, inflicts damage and bleed debuff that cannot be removed. This place for 14 seconds. Fury increased by 5 and HP recovered. So he has a um, he has a gauge mechanic to where if he fills out that bar he does like a lot more damage and stuff like that. Pretty much like um, who should I use an example of? Actually, it's been a while since I've seen a character. Oh, um, Kai. He's kind of like Kai. Because Kai has a whole gauge. Once that's full, he transforms. Yeah, it's pretty much like that gauge. For every Fury, you do fixed damage increase by 10%. Fury can stack up to 100 times. And will not be lost on death. Okay. So you can revive him and he'll still have all of his fury. So that can, that can make him pretty dangerous to be honest. That can actually make him really dangerous when he uh, gets the 100 times. So I can see how they balance that out a little bit. A little bit. But anywho. Third passive. Receiving fatal damage will, well, pretty much, if you guys don't know where fatal damage is, is, and if you're new to games like this, fatal damage is pretty much any damage that can kill the character. Just so you guys know that, if you're, like, you know, confused and you need layman's term. But, when receiving fatal damage, you will become invisible for 10 seconds. For each fury you have, the duration for... How long is yeah the duration for how long you live is increased by 0 0.1 when invulnerable your attack speed is increased and your damage is increased oh my god when your invulnerability ends the rest of your fury is used for HP PvP character hands down PvP extremely good for PvP PvE not so much Lee, from what I see, is just straight up PvP and a monster at it too. Removes your buff, causes a whole bunch of bleed, gets extra damage, becomes invulnerable, and just starts shredding you. Yeah, it seems like he's really strong for it. So that should be interesting. Oh, hold up. We're getting arc skills already. Are the overlords getting our hold up? No, nah, that's I don't think I've noticed it. Ah, I want to go down and look, but we'll look at it later. All right, it's max passive decreases all enemies attack and increase all allies melee and their main stats. Enemies bleed from strike are prevented. Wait, what? Enemies bleeding from strike are prevented from healing. Oh. Okay. So, yeah. That's really good. Okay. That, yeah. Pfft. Screw any invisible character, pretty much. Doubles your fury. Oh, well, yeah, this is ultimate. Ultimate passive doubles your fury. All party members can see the t concealed enemies. So that means all those invisible enemies 
are no longer a factor. That's just a huge counter to a lot of invisible characters that survive off of invisibility. Which is going to suck for them. Alright, his arc skill. All the attacks will not miss while using swipe. Um, increases his damage and attack speed by even more. So yeah, this man is a straight up monster. Gains immunity. In addition, all oh all enemies can't receive buffs. Lee is terrifying at arc for for sure. Like Jesus Christ. I could actually see him being a huge factor inside of the uh, PvP. Alright, so now we got Asherai. I think that's how you say his name. He's a rogue. Inflicts four times the damage. Alright, so he already has the roguelike normal skill. First skill, inflicts damage on all enemies. Increase the damage they receive from normal attacks for 20 seconds. Second skill increases your melee damage and additional boss damage in, sw in swift mode. All enemies hit will receive identical damage once more. An additional damage of the normal attacks will be doubled. Oh. Okay, that's... Ow. I can see what they're trying to go for there. That That is definitely dangerous. Third skill invokes clouds for 14 seconds. Summons a cloud that attacks one enemy every second, increasing the damage they receive. Well, the physical damage they receive for 20 seconds. Okay, I can see that being really, really good for physical team. Alright, passives. Normal attacks charge one thunderbolt and increases your normal attack by 20% each time. This effect cannot be removed or absorbed. Thunderbolt can charge up to 100 times. And his second pass, so Jesus Christ, that is a lot of boss damage. It <laughs> increases your boss damage. And your normal attack. Huh. Alright, his third passive. When Thunderbolt is fully charged, true Thunderbolt mode will be activated where two daggers combined to create a single sword and deal stronger damage. True Thunderbolt mode lasts for 17 seconds, increase your normal attack. When it ends, your fixed damage increases. Your normal attack will charge two Thunderbolts. The spelled effects of true Thunderbolt mode can stack up to five times and cannot be removed. Alright. His max passive increases your damage and your physical damage. Okay. Ultimate passive increases your fixed damage, increases your normal damage, and your additional boss damage when in true Thunderbolt mode. Normal attacks charge four Thunderbolts and enhances true Thunderbolt for stacking to seven times. Jesus Christ, this guy is. Oh my god, even more boss damage. What the hell is up with this character? Arc passive increases additional boss damage, increases physical damage, increases attack speed. This guy needs to chill. <laughs> yeah, I think this is a really good PvE character, hands down. I can't see him doing a lot in PvP, but hands down, with all this additional boss damage, he can destroy a lot of bosses. And since we don't have to worry about, you know, Guild Adventure doing, like, the whole, hey, you gotta kill the boss in, like, this amount of 
hours or seconds and stuff like that. Eh. I don't even know if building boss characters are even worth it anymore since you're not really doing anything much special inside a guild adventure. That's because guild adventure gave us a reason to build like characters like this. I think the only thing he'll be really useful for is guild loot. <laughs> Because everything else we can kill. I mean, it's not like we can take in one character into a boss raid and use him to destroy bosses. Even though that would be sick, but... Yeah, he's not really used for much other than just racking up score inside of a kill loop. Well, anywho, we're going to keep going. Next we have last Lathia. I think that's how you say her name, but... You know, she's a, she is our encanter. She has... Decrease def defense on our normal attacks. Her first skill inflicts damage on one enemy. Also, fixed damage. Enemies th that were hit receive additional damage for every second. For 26 seconds. Physical damage increases. Physical damage received increases. For magical troops, magic damage received. Wait, what? That just confused the hell out of me. For magical troops, magic damage received increases by 10% instead of physical damage received. This stacks up to 10 times. Inc increases irremovable fixed damage on troops that march for 60 seconds to 10 seconds to 10 times. In addition, increases additional boss damage for physical troops, magical troops. Okay then. So she deals with both physical and magical. Okay, so let's keep reading. That, that threw me off a little bit. Maybe her passive will explain better. Um, second skill, decreases damage received for 5 seconds. This cannot be removed. And is not affected by Cerberus. Can I use your first skill while troops are focused on defense? Okay, so basically, while they're def in defense mode, taking all the damage, you can't use this. So, basically saying they can't attack and defend at the same time. Alright. Alright, third skill. Increases all party members' physical damage and normal damage. Increases physical damage for troops and additional damage for 38 seconds when physical troops are assembled. Increases all party members magic attack when magic troops are on the field. HP increase via battlefield cannot be removed and stacked up to three times. Nice. All right, passives. If the majority of your party are mage and encanters, the troops will have strong magic attack. These magical troops will attack enemies with magic upon using your first skill. Troops have gained immunity and cannot retreat against Cerberus. Okay. So if you guys don't know, Cerberus usually eats um, summons. So Cerberus cannot eat her soldiers. Which is pretty good. All right, second passive. Increases normal attack and melee attack of all party members. Third passive increases HP and decreases damage received. Also increases attack. All right, max passive increases the damage that the troops deal. And it also causes damage over time while using the first skill. Also increases physical damage received on enemies. And increases damage over time and physical damage received stacks up to 15 times. Increases additional boss damage of troops and will also stack up to 15 times. Increases magic damage received instead of physical for magic troops. Hmm. I'm sorry if I did read that weirdly. I was trying to change it to 
fit to where it sound like the easiest. I do apologize if I read that wrong. Alright, ultimate passive. Increases boss damage and normal attack upon using your third skill. For magic troops, AoE attacks is increased instead of normal attack. Sorry, hiccups. But yeah, I can see that being pretty nice. Especially increasing your damage of your troops. That's actually really good for summons. Just because your normal canter is attacking and your troops are attacking. That That's just overall really good. Alright, so the arm skill increases your attack of troops by additional damage while using your first skill. Increases boss damage of, of the troops. All attacks become critical. Increases boss damage for magic troops. Yeah, she's a little bit weirder to actually think of a good role for. Like, her, her skills are something you, you gotta look at instead of... Yeah. Uh, she's a weird one. Let's just say that. But from what I see so far, she's really good for bosses. Just like uh, Azura here. So yeah, these two I would recommend for world boss. Alright, as for you, I'm really interested to know what you do. So this is Asia. Uh, stuns enemies. It doesn't say how long it stuns, so I guess it stuns for like a second or something to just interrupt their skills or something. So I'm just going to go with that. Alright, so first skill. Removes all removable buffs for enemies and inflicts damage. Enemies hit cannot use skills for 14 seconds. Their attack is decreased. Their attack speed is decreased. Their defense is decreased. Okay, physical damage received is also increased. So enemies will be taking more damage. All right. Um, second skill. Protects ally. So it protects a ally, not multiple allies. Okay. Protects ally for 9 seconds. Attack aimed towards protected ally will absorb to Aja instead. And she will receive only 40% of the damage. Most of the time, she's just going to try to protect the priest more than anybody else. So that's that's noted. More PvP. It is not applied in the same battlefield at the same time. Wait, what? Okay, that little part kind of confused me, but... I guess it was just the way I read it. Object protection cannot be removed or affected by servers. So, another protection... I'll just shield. All party members are protected from magical attacks. Oh, so that calendar is a whole magical party. That could actually be really good. And increases physical damage. Why is there a dollar sign? <laughs> what? I just realized that. Why? Why the hell is there a dollar sign? I have no idea what that's supposed to be. I'm guessing it increases your. I guess it's supposed to be a percent. And somebody screwed up. Yeah, somebody pushed the 4 key instead of the 5 key. So yeah, translations are pretty all over the place. If you guys have heard me stutter and stuff, you know, I kind of cut clips out and put them together, especially if I read it wrong. First passive. Increases your stamina, which is pretty much your HP. Decreases damage received for all party members. Alright, second passive. Decreases all enemies' magic attack. Their single attack and their attack speed. Third passive. All damage received cannot be over 12% of her HP. So she can't get one-shotted. Enemies attacking her with magic will get damage dealt back to them. Okay, that's actually pretty nice. That's really nice, actually. Alright, her max passive. 
casts an irremovable if this ability on allies that are less than oh this could be really good for tower this could actually be really good for tower because that keeps you from getting your whole team one shot at if that actually works oh i actually might build this character she actually seems really nice she seems like a she seems like an interesting version of Kronos. But her ultimate passive increases Audra's protection to 14 seconds. Okay. Not bad, not bad. Arc passive decreases all damage that Asia receives. And the attacking enemies receive additional damage. Receive return damage. Not bad, so she's pretty much like a reflect character, which is actually pretty decent. Because they're dealing damage to themselves, and that's just causing extra DPS each time they attack and add on to it. Alright, increases her HP. When using protection skill, the HP of the uh, ally being protected also increases. Oh, wait. Okay, no, I read that right. Wait. Okay, yeah, this is weirdly translated. That's what got me. Uh, when using the protection skill, the allies' HP being protected by Asia is also increased by... Okay. That Y right there threw me off. That's where I lost my uh, train, of, <laughs> train of thought is attack wait what attack and attack speed is increased respectfully Asia is also a guaranteed immunity when using Asia's strength skill Asia is also invulnerable for five seconds I'm sorry like that so word weirdly but yeah yeah that mm. anywho <laughs> yeah we're getting arc enhancements so yeah more work yay what i always wanted yay <laughs> oh god the leveling and stuff we're gonna have to do this is gonna be a full week of enhancements they're gonna have to increase rewards as well because that's gonna be like a huge huge deal with the whole farming things and that's gonna throw off a lot of players as well but anywho our skills are added to each overlord their effects is actually added to each overlord stuff like that pretty standard stuff content balance guild battle and all of this stuff has been adjusted wait what why can you change back guild loot because guild loot literally takes like a long ass time to finish now which you guys didn't update us when it was going to change and you just changed it <laughs> just said fuck it but yeah all these places are being adjusted for some reason odd guild boss why, why would you adjust his HP is that like we can actually kill him though? At least I don't think we can kill him. Why does he need to HP adjust? Huh. Anywho. Guild tournament. Is a new feature that is being added. Okay. So it's pretty much like guild versus guild. It's going to be auto battles. Obviously. Because the game is hugely auto battle now there is mimic attacks so you rehearse battles with guild members okay all right so we got new um, achievements for the overlords and runes and but yeah that's pretty much that's pretty nice 
Uh, these two are the most important ones. Arc Buster is not really all that important, but they have been increased from level 69 to level 83. So that means you can make both your runes and your transcended weapon way stronger. Icon change, and then there is bug fixes. Wow, they haven't even gotten into the game yet, and they already fixed them. <laughs> uh, these are these will be our rewards. So yeah, Jan's gonna log in for two weeks. Pretty interesting rewards going on. Oh jeez, this was a interesting little patch so this all comes out tomorrow it all seems like it's gonna be really tedious how do I feel about the character so far Lee terrifying at arc inside of PvP is he worth it yeah I can definitely say he's worth it especially with some of the things he can do just him it's just this third passive and just the rest of these just make him so dangerous and plus he denies you healing which is also a thing it doesn't tell you how long it, it denies it so I'm I want to guess it's through the whole battle if so that's going to be strong he's also going to be good for um, tag matches from what I see just because inv <laughs> invisibility is like a huge thing Considering that we have a invisibility skill on on like a tag team or tag match, whichever one you want to call it. So yeah, Lee, terrifying. <sighs> Azra could be really, really good for world bosses. Like insanely good for world bosses. Definitely say that. Pretty terrifying. PvE content, he's definitely worth it. This character still have mixed feelings about. Not sure where I would take her, but she is good for physical and magic damage teams. But I wish one of her passes would say, hey, if you have more, more physical units, she would use more physical soldiers. If you have more magical units, there's a bigger chance of you summoning more magical units. But uh, from what I see, they will all be at random. So she's a mixture of both. So you can go pretty much either way with her. But she does have like a passive that is aimed towards uh, mages and encanters. Then increases their troops damage. So yeah, that's actually pretty good too. Um, as for Asia, I can definitely see her being a replacement for Kronos a little bit. Well, actually a lot because that passive to where if somebody goes into low HP, that's pretty nice. But it does say for allies, so I'm guessing when one ally hits that threshold, everybody gets invisibility. So I want to see, does it proc before everybody is killed? Because if she becomes really good for tower, she's just straight up better than Kronos. <laughs> because Kronos can't even get his freaking skill off before everybody gets nuked. <laughs> That's, that's the reason why a lot of people haven't passed towers, just because their whole team gets, just gets destroyed before anything ever happens. So she could actually save us from that. What about what do I think about the arc as well? Yay! Yeah. Yay! More grinding. <laughs> that just means I have to grind even more every day and just use my rubies towards my all of my shoes. And some of you guys have asked me where did I get this skin. This was the old um, winter skin. So probably next winter or this winter, this December around Christmas, uh, this skin should be coming back for you guys. 
Yeah, definitely one of my favorite skins. I just took it off for a while just because I finally got the um, Challenger skin from the um, coin shop. If I can remember where the shop is. There it is. Oh no, that's the wrong shop. Because we don't have any cool skins in there anymore. Because we don't get skins. <sighs> to be honest, I think this game would have been a lot more successful with the skins again, dude. But... They refuse to give them to characters. But yeah, since I had this skin and it took me like forever to get up here just to get this skin, I, I just wore this for a long time. But yeah, this is definitely my favorite skin so far. Oh, we also have the uh, guild battles to go up against. Right now, I think we're platinum. We're a platinum guild, yeah. So we've been doing pretty good. Platinum tier. I wonder what all the other guilds are. I don't think we can see that, right? Doesn't tell you what... Yeah. Doesn't tell you what... Like, tier they are. I don't even know... How you even look at tiers. Yeah, participate. Okay, there's Diamond. So we're, like, in second place tier. Our guild's doing good for just like a few members that actually still play. We'll make it a diamond tier someday. But if you guys need a guild, you guys are more than welcome to apply, especially if you're new and plan on playing a lot or coming back to the game and you need a guild. We are available. Recommended allies. How many people are using... Okay. <laughs> Kronos is still up there. Yeah, Kronos is probably the most overused um, transcended just for the protection. I think Asia might really re might replace him. Might. Big emphasis on might. I, I want to test her in tower as soon as I get her. But, uh, with that said, guys. Hope you all enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you guys actually enjoyed the video. If you didn't, then leave a dislike. And I, it really doesn't matter to me. Works for me either way. <laughs> but, hope you guys enjoyed. Until then, peace. Out. Swear it's gonna get better real soon. Don't let anyone tell you what you should do. I got a clear view. We're gonna make it soon. Just keep pushing through Yo, what you got to lose? Yo, what you got to lose? Yo, what you got to lose? Just keep pushing through Cause what you got to lose?